We have been receiving multiple requests on how to move a waving flag with another moving object. So we have created this quick tutorial to show how exactly we can keep a waving flag attached to an object which is animating in size. But if you have never created a flag before, I recommend you to first watch our tutorial on how to create a waving flag in Blender, or take a look at our auto flag add-on that can automatically add waving flags to your data comparison video. Both the links are given below in the video description. Now let's say we have created these flags, and if we run this composition from the beginning, we will see that the columns are animating in height, but the flags are completely standstill, whereas we want them to also move upward like this, along with the data columns. So, let's take this middle one. If we expand the timeline editor, we can see that there are two keyframes. In the first keyframe, the height of the data column is zero. Then the height animation starts, and in the second keyframe, it takes the full height. To copy this motion for the flag, we need to do it in two steps. First go to this first keyframe for the data column. Then select this flagpole, and move it down, to just touch the top of the data column. We can fine-tune the value here, by typing it as needed. Then we have to do the same for this flag, but if you try to move it, you'll discover that it does not move, because a cloth physics is already active on this flag. So we have to first go to frame number 1, which is usually the start frame of the cloth simulation. Now you can easily move it down to match it with the location of the flagpole. Let's use a perfect value by directly typing it down. Then select the data column, and go to its first keyframe. No need to worry if the flag goes away, we'll fix it later. Let's select the flagpole, and keyframe its height. Now again select the data column, go to its next keyframe, and we need to select the flagpole, which actually got hidden inside the data column. Once it is selected, move it back to its original position on the top, or you can use a direct value in the Z location and then keyframe this value. So what this does is, they both will now animate together just as we wanted. And one important thing is still pending, we have to connect the flag permanently to this flagpole, so that it moves along with the pole. So again go to the start frame of the cloth simulation, which is usually frame number 1. Then go to the modifiers tab. Two modifiers are already there, one is this cloth modifier, and another is a subdivision surface. This cloth modifier is added by Blender, because we have enabled cloth physics for this flag, so it also created an entry in the modifiers tab. Here we have to add a hook modifier. The most important thing is, this hook modifier needs to be placed before the cloth modifier like this. Please remember that this order is important, otherwise this modifier won't work. Now in this object field, we have to select this flagpole. So let's pick up the eyedropper tool, and then select this pole. After that, in this vertex group, we have to select that same vertex group that has been used in the cloth physics. So under the shape section, you'll have a pin group, and whatever vertex group is used here, we have to pick up that same vertex group in this drop-down field. And finally with this, we are done with the second flag, but we have to do the same thing for the other flags here. Let's fast forward it a little bit, because you already got the idea. Once everything is complete, we have to again bake the cloth physics for these flags. So in the physics tab, scroll down to the cache section, delete all baked data, and start a fresh baking process. Once this is also complete, let's run this animation from the beginning. So we can see that the flags are now moving along with the height animation of our data columns. This is how you can combine a waving flag with a moving object. Let's turn on the rendered view mode, and unhide the floor for this composition. If you are a member of this channel, you can download our blend files and experiment with the settings we have discussed. So I hope you like this tutorial, and I hope it helps you in creating a data comparison video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.